welcome to our lesson on which mask for which task. Today, we are going to be talking about um, which masks might be appropriate for the work that you are doing. And so we're going to talk a little bit about the mask selection that is available to the general public for um, going out, out and, and doing our work. The one that is very commonly used and uh, very popular is the N95 mask. The N95 mask will do almost everything that you need um, to, to filter the particles and impurities out of the air. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about the N95 mask in itself. Basically, the N means that it is um, gonna be more for general use. However, it does not filter any of the oil-based particles um, that might be in the air. Um, that's where the R95 mask will start to filter some of the oils, and then we can go on and we can see other masks like the P95, which is gonna filter um, oils at a very high level um, as you breathe in. So the letters do mean N will be non-resistant to oils, the R is somewhat resistant to oils, and the P is strongly resistant to oils that may filter through um, your respirator. Now the number, uh, the 95, means that it will filter about 95% of the particles that may be tried to breathe through that, that respirator or mask. The higher that number, the harder it is gonna be to breathe in there, and so you have to watch that you don't get a, a high number, especially if you have breathing issues or lung issues, um, because people can suffocate um, or find it very hard to breathe with a high number of a 99 or 100 as the number on your respirator. As we get into a lot of the farm work that uh, many of our producers might be doing, or if you're out there working with gases or paints, then you're probably going to go to a, a half mask air purifier respirator. Um, and these are going to come with uh, detachable cartridges that are gonna have a much more specific uh, particle that they are going to be filtering for the user um, in this particular case. Chemicals um, such as ammonia, anhydrous, um, acid gases, and, and many of the vapors, your N95 mask may not be sufficient to filter those um, particles through. Obviously, if we are going to get into the really um, high concentrated pesticides, carbon monoxide, you're going to need a respirator of uh, basically a self-contained breathing apparatus that's going to go in and provide oxygen um, to you as well, and you can find that at the lower part of this, this diagram. So which mask for which task? Let's talk about what respirators or masks really do. Again, it will filter what you are breathing out at about 95%, and it will also filter in what you're taking in from the air around you into, the, into your, your breathing cavities. And we're gonna talk about, do you put your mask on appropriately? Now, first of all, if you are a person that does have glasses on, the way that you're gonna make these masks work is to grab a hold of the mask, put it the, the straps on the, palm of your hand or on the outside of your hand, place it up against your face, pull the top band across, and then you pull the bottom band across. Now, make them fit. If you can feel air breathing through your nose or up to your eyes, or if you know that it's not tight along your chin, or if you've got a beard and you're starting to notice that there's a lot of air movement down here, your mask really isn't doing a whole lot for you. Use the, the band and press it in until you feel no air movement up to your eyes. We're gonna do a quick little demonstration here about this proper way of taking the masks off as well. And we're gonna do a quick demonstration about what happens if they don't fit properly. Now I put a little bit of glow germ inside of this mask. We're gonna put it on appropriately. And then we're going to sneeze. Now this mask may be um, appropriate, but let's talk about what happens to the impurities that may be in the mask. A sneeze 
is a air movement of approximately 100 miles per hour. So if I can make myself sneeze, <coughs> now what we're gonna do is we're going to take that mask off and we are gonna find out with this glow germ, we can turn the light off, we're going to start to look at what it has done to my face. Now notice what's happened up here is that we didn't have that nose piece on appropriately and we've got glow germ all the way up our face. All the way around here, um, I've got germs and it, whatever the germ might be, it is now spread. So if we can have the light back on again, we're gonna go on to the next session, the section of this, this program. Many of us also like to use gloves. Now, there's also many types of gloves that are um, acceptable and they, people uh, really like to use them to give themselves a sense of security uh, when they're out in, in uh, areas that there might be a lot of bacteria or germs. You can use latex gloves, the nitrile uh, gloves, or the vinyl gloves. And again, you want to make sure that you use them appropriately. Um, the vinyl gloves are really inexpensive. Um, you basically use them once, you throw them away. Um, the latex gloves, they really fit snug and they're equipped with powder in there so they don't make your hands sweat. They're easier to get on and off. The nitro gloves, they basically fit like a glove. They, they will make your hand um, get a little sweaty at times. Um, they do have a little thermal activity in there and uh, keep your hands warm. And then also um, we have the PVC gloves as well. So let's talk a little bit about the, the glove and how we put those gloves on. Basically, we wanna make sure that we keep your hands clean. You should wash your hands probably prior to putting your gloves on. And as we put those gloves on, one of the things that I see big mistakes with is that we put these gloves on and then we go and do our daily work and we're on everything and everything that we touch is now infected and we're going to do a little bit of a test so when we talk about all this stuff that might have happened we got these germs and we can see a little bit of the glow germ and so we also want to make sure that you if you touch something look where your hands go even while the gloves are on you touch your nose you touch your eyes um, if you have a mask on or whatever it might be you're still spreading germs no matter what so use the gloves but understand what they're really doing is they are protecting you from the bacteria at that particular time. But when you take your gloves off, then it's really important that you follow through and you do the hand washing for the 20 seconds, use soap, or if you're gonna use hand sanitizers, make sure that it's got alcohol in there to kill the bacteria. The next one we're gonna talk a little bit about here is how to properly take your gloves off. Basically, you can bring them back, and then you can come underneath of the, your palm, and you can bring that around, and basically what you've done is you've made a little cavity, and so you've got all of the bacteria inside of the glove. And so if we can go back to our screen, we do have a nice little demonstration here about how to um, take the gloves off. Um, again, you can use gloves and they do help in the spread of the bacteria um, to get on your hands, but remember that everything you touch has now got bacteria on and if you don't exchange your gloves from the time that you touch one item to the next item, basically you're just spreading bacteria anyways. And so you have to be careful that you don't put too much confidence in the glove in itself. Hand washing is still the most effective way to um, clean your hands and to disinfect your, your body um, after you've been using them. So really find the right mask. Most of the time it will be an N95 mask. Um, and then make sure that you fit it properly. And if you are one that's really um, concerned about the spread of germs, use gloves. But basically you need to um, you know, watch what you're touching. And if, you know, don't touch your nose or your eyes or the rest of your body with gloves on because really the gloves are doing nothing um, in that 
particular event. And as soon as you have been out in public or been out where you may have been exposed to more bacteria, you want to make sure that you go and you disinfect with a, an alcohol-based product or to wash your hands, take a shower. And this can help reduce the risk of the bacteria that might get into your body and cause you um, some illness. So again, we encourage you to um, use your PPE, your personal protective equipment, but make sure that you use it appropriately. And we hope that everybody can stay safe um, as we move through this uh, interesting time of concerns about the spread of bacteria. Thank you.